Well, what can you say about the beard? How about a career high in points? And as good as we've seen in the garden, you want to talk about center stage on 7th Avenue? MVPs back to back? We've got it center stage. Game time on NBA TV. Harden style, making it easy. We try to bring you groundbreaking information open every show. So here it is for tonight. James Harden is good at the game of basketball. Welcome on set. It is our Wednesday night show here on Game Time. We are live. Casey Stern, Steve Smith, Ryan Hollins, Smitty, Holly. Uh, I, can we outdo what we've already done? The answer is, what would Marv say? Yes, we can. <laughs> and we did. He spent a lot of time at the Garden, and James Harden spent a couple of hours, and it was more than enough to put up 60-plus. It looked like. It would be an 80-point kind of a night. Uh, 20 okay. straight games of 30-plus okay. points coming in, guys. Is that good? Cook. Yeah, that's okay. Cook. Manuel Moutier, you can keep your hand up as long as you want. Not going to matter. I mean, you see, guys. Ila you know, Kina, good defender. Nope, mm, I love good. it, Casey and Ryan. People are saying, you know, you got to push him right. No, you got to keep him left. I They're saying, come on, man. Kevin Knox, 19 years old. Holly, come on. He in the league, right? Yeah, I get it. Okay. That. Okay. Good for him. He's playing, he playing chess that everybody else is playing checkers, man. He's just reading your feet. And, and when you know you can hit a step back three, like your, your game opens up off a step back three, there's not much you can do. Final seconds of the half. Harden misses the shot. Put back at the buzzer. 36 points. The rest of the Rockets had 22. No matter what. The Knicks had 20. You got big games, yeah. but when you're doing the garden. Uh, yeah, oh, still hey. in the garden. That's right. Um, and you're still giving it to the garden. Harden. 51, and you know this, one thing about the Garden, I've seen a ton of games there. They start to appreciate you. On the other side, they really, I mean, look, they root for their Knicks, but all of a sudden you put together a night, they pay attention. Lonzo Trier trying to keep the Knicks in it. Puts okay. him down three. I love that. Free kid. throw two. Wasn't drafted yet, but you can see the talent he has, and he has earned himself a way in the NBA and a contract. Oh, my. Mm. Mitchell Robinson has not seen that move before. Harden? Licking the lips, he knew there was more, but the Knicks were still in a down four. Trier at the line. Sinks the free throw. Gordon tries to inbound to P.J. Tucker. Watch this. <laughs> whoa, 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 uh, whoa. <laughs> P.J. <laughs> he was trying to get Harden a triple-double. <laughs> no, that's not a steal, P.J. <laughs> Hashtag ball had cooties. <laughs> Lead one, <laughs> Trier. What a move inside Ooh. off glass. Beauty. Jack in the food, PJ Tucker. Ooh. And this is under rim. That's a nice eight. move. That might be a top 10 candidate. Yeah. Definitely oh, in the boy. top five. Ensuing yeah. possession, Eric Gordon mm. had 20 in the game, uncovered. You might want to, well, one of you guys should. Nope. Okay. Don't go under on that, man. Don't play, don't play to play. Play you know, it's basketball. crazy now, Ryan. You can't go under when guys are 35 feet out. Watch this. Mm. Uh, Facts. Inbound. Steal. Mm. He thirsty. I, I'm disappointed in him Put on that play call at the end. I, I, I'm not giving Vonley the ball going toward the three-point line. You mean all. the play wasn't Vonley? Just go take it to the rack Maybe, from beyond the arc? Maybe, saying, he got to have well, a counter. Well, the thing is, you want to catch the ball tight on that elbow, and it works on the three-point line, so now you're in a scoring area. Dude, let me tell you something. We could sit there and talk about who it's against or what. When you sit there and play and you've got 21 games in a row with 30-plus, you put mm. 61. I don't care if it's rookie level against a nine-year-old on 2K. You do it with the big boys. James Harden looking for that second straight MVP. It's clearly not a limit, and let's uh, be fair. Uh, defense, not necessarily if you could just could score every time up and down the floor. Top five single-game scores at MSG since 68. Mello, 62. You want to talk about opposing players? Boom, right there. And sandwiched T and Kobe are between... Mello and the great Bernard King, and Jordan, by the way, had a few of those at the Garden as well. Uh, Smitty, we always talk about this. You talk about this, right? First game, I believe, if I'm correct, right? Was your first game at the Garden, or am I wrong with that? My first game was against the Knicks, but it was against in Against the Knicks. But I oh, will okay. say, let's go, Casey. Once I was talking about it, it's always you're measured by how you play in the Garden. Even back when I started playing before that, it's the electricity of the fans, it's the knowledge of the fan, it's the passion we talked about, yeah. Ryan. And then give James Harden credit. You know what guys have done, no matter what. People say you don't look at stats. You know what Kobe did when he came into the guard. You know what Mike did. And he is on a tear. The one thing I love about James Harden is there are some great players. He loves to play. 
The reason why I say that, he plays just as hard, does the same thing in the Drew League. Yep. He is playing Drew League basketball in the he NBA. Does. And this is no disrespect <laughs> to the NBA. He loves the game. You don't see a guy with his stature going and playing in the summertime the way he plays. And that's why I'm showing right now how much he loves to play. He's the best left-handed scorer I've ever seen. And look, we have P.J. Tucker here on with us on Arena Link on Game Time a couple weeks ago. He said, Holly, he said, look, this is the first guy in, the last guy out. Sometimes it's overused, but that's our best player and the MVP and he's working. It's hard to imagine a guy after last season could get better. Has he actually gotten better, or are we just watching more of the same? And maybe he's taking on more, so we're seeing it more exploited because of the fact that he doesn't have as many teammates. It's funny you heard him say his legacy was on the line. And this was a team that was in 12th place in the West. They were in danger of actually missing the playoffs. CP goes down. Uh, Gordon gets hurt a couple games later. So his legacy was pressed. Now they're fifth in the West, but it's been on his back. And I had to question hey, is he going to have enough down the stretch or even during the season to actually put his team in position to be in the playoffs? Then Capella goes out, and we all go, man, I don't know what this is going to look like. Boom, 62 in the garden. How many 30 straight plus games? So his legacy was on the line. It was there, and he's responded much more than even anybody could have expected. Casey, I want to say thing, and Ryan, thank you, Sam Presti, for not kidding Mm. because it seems like he's always a good player. It seems like that was the boost. And that was that little jab because he wanted to be an OKC from my understanding. Yeah. He is taking his level. I'm not a third option now to Russell Westbrook and KD. He's taking his level game to another level. So I want to thank Sam Preston, OKC, because we're getting a chance. To with, with Smitty, too, we talked about this earlier. Defensively, he's a capable guy, and he mm-hmm. has defended better. What if you heard James Harden in the post-conference talking about, yeah, we had to defend. When we defended, things happen. He doesn't have that luxury anymore. So you got to give even more respect to a guy who gets a big-time steal at the end of the game with after scoring 60 points. Most guys who score 60, they're taking a night off and letting P.J. Tucker and those other guys, but he was riding the fold of things. The other thing is, look, has at times been questioned for whether it's with – the the talking or how he presents himself, maybe not being a leader, all the postseason stuff, and he's going to need to obviously have that huge postseason where maybe he has that moment where he takes everyone on his back. But isn't leadership giving more effort and showing that in the face mm. of adversity, you're the example? Because I don't know about you guys. I know people at home are. You're watching as these guys drop him play harder, yeah. more effort on defense. Mm-hmm take more time on the court, have to take more shots clearly, but that is leadership, right? It is, and if you're around a guy like that, seeing what he's doing night in, night out, this is a guy who's going through double teams, getting to the line, he's getting bumped. You can't be out of shape being able to play this way because it will catch up to you. This is showing you what he's doing when he's away from us, the television. He is putting in even more work with his body. James Harden scores. You don't do this 20, what, some games consecutive of 30 21. points? 21. 21 now. 21, yeah. This is something that's unique. You can score the basketball, but you usually have one of those nights when you're off. And to me, the first thing that goes, Ryan, is your legs. Yep. Look yep. at this free throw percentage. <laughs> Still high. 22 or 25 tonight. I hope they let him sit down on a chair when he got back into the locker room. Here's more from Harden after this great performance. You know, I wanted to be aggressive tonight like I've been uh, this entire season. And... You know, I'm just happy we came away with the win. Like, every game isn't going to be perfect. Uh, some nights we're going to shoot the ball great. Um, some we aren't. But as a team, we got to be able to fight and, and consistently have our defense on, pay, on pace. And um, tonight it was some ups and downs. But um, like you said, with the absences of, 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 with those guys, uh, wins are all that matters. Is it special for you to tie the opponent's record here at Madison Square Garden for scoring? Yeah. This is one of the historic, uh, historic, historical buildings in, that uh, in, a, in a sport that we have. Um, obviously, the fans are you know, one of the best um, that we have in this league, and so uh, it's pretty cool to come out here and just uh, put them on the show for them. At this point in the season, what do you need to work on as a team to move up? We have sense? to get healthy. That's the most important thing. We get healthy, and, and we'll move forward from there. But um, obviously, uh, Clint is out a little bit longer, but Chris, uh, we'll be back very soon, and as long as we can get healthy and, and catch a rhythm, uh, everything else will be great. When you raised your arms after the final dunk, was it over just finally securing the win? Or yeah, for sure. The- we let the game slip away three times, <laughs> and we've seen that kind of. We've been allowing that to happen these last few games, and when we have opportunities to close games out. We have to do it. You know, the mental mistakes. Uh, we weren't focused, and, and we give them opportunities, give them hope. Um, you know, at the end of the game. When you asked yesterday about a gaudy moment. Will this do? Yeah. Uh, you guys just, uh, 
Yeah. Big time. Big time. I mean, every game for us, you know, we're, we're, we're down players, so every game for us is a big time game. Like, we're not going to overlook the Knicks. We're not going to overlook the Toronto Raptors. Obviously, we know there's a difference, but for us, you know, we have to be focused, you know, for every single game and every opponent. Got a lot of landmarks. What about a career high tonight? In the garden? I'll take it. Does it mean more to you? need to make a run or go yeah. ahead, it seemed like. I mean, did you have to cut short your rest at all tonight? Yeah. It's been happening, but, you know, we're limited guys, you know, and, and so whatever I have to do to, to try to win games, I'll do it. And Coach knows that. James, when you score 61, and on a night like this when you can get to the line 25 times, how much pride do you take in the fact that you can win games that way as opposed to just hitting outside shots? There's, there's multiple games. There's a lot of ways you can win games. You know, you could be hot one game. You could not be hot. Some games you got to rely on your defense. Um, some games you got to slow it down a little bit more. But the shots that we love to take in our offense, we'll take them every single game. Obviously, all of them don't go in. So um, you got to find other ways to win games. and. and when we needed to get stops, we did that. Can you tell us about Mike Nantoni's coaching style and what you learned from him? I mean, honestly, he just, I mean, playing for, for coach, he gives, you know, not only myself, but just the entire team a lot of freedom. Like, he doesn't really yell. He, he just lets you go out there and play. Um, all you have to do is go out there and do your job, play extremely hard um, and, and play, you know, within your role. And, and, and that's all that matters. You know, I know, I know a lot of coaches have you know, strict rules and, you know, players aren't allowed to do certain things on the court, but he just lets you go out there and play free, and, and that's the one thing I love about him. He's he's a you know real players coach. James, I know it's a team game, but it's that Toronto game. What's it like to go up against Kawhi? Do you? I mean, it's not even just Kawhi. There, Toronto has a really really good team. You know, they're they're probably one of the deepest teams we have in this league, and so obviously Ka Kawhi is a catalyst. But you know, Kyle Lowry, he's healthy. Uh, uh, Siakam is playing very very well. Um, Serge, I mean, they, their entire team. You go down the list and. Um, any, anybody on their team can get it going, so it's going to be a tough challenge for us. Did you tune into the crowd at all? Like they would cheer you on some plays and then boo you when you go to the line. It was kind of they couldn't figure out. They they can figure out what they wanted to do, but <laughs> uh, I mean I appreciate them though, honestly. Like they they tonight they kept me going and made the game exciting for me. Do you see that everywhere you go, conflicted yeah. fans? No, you don't. You don't. That's why this place is special. Uh, I'm just happy, you know. Because they appreciate good basketball. Exactly. And I'm just happy I can give them a 61. Thank appreciate you. it, y'all. Thank you. James, referencing exactly what we were just talking about, it, what I, growing up there, growing up a Nick fan, you notice it's, it's odd that way because they are so passionate, but even at times, not maybe in the playoffs, when Jordan during all those battles is going on, there is like a respect <laughs> level that's kind of weird. Like they can't figure out whether or not they love somebody or they hate somebody. Um, but James Harden clearly was was doing what he could to utilize that energy. That last play, look, that steal, come on. Smitty, this is the playground, though. Yes. New York, it's like, like, it's at the plate where, like, your game earns that respect, and that's what you have from the crowd in the garden. So, as a Nick, fan, as a Nick player, you probably hate it when they're cheering for the other team, but it's a playground type of who has it, who doesn't. You know, you're on the biggest stage of basketball. That's what you get in New York, and then a guy like Harden, like, he literally said, this was feeling me. It was feeling me. They kept me going. And if you go for 62 and actually play defense on the other side, that, that's the garden. You know, here's the thing, too. We were talking about this, and I think this is important to bring up. Clearly, what James is doing may be another MVP, Smitty. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. We're talking about, well, is he the greatest, this, that, whatever. Have we forgotten that the season started? It was, wait, if Chris Paul wasn't hurt last year, mm. the Rockets maybe beat the Warriors. Okay, they lost some defense. We understand that, not discounting it. Where are they now? Because we're seeing him drag everyone on the back and go. When CP3 and Capella get back and they get towards the playoffs, what kind of Rockets are we looking at now? Well, we're looking at a Rockets team right now should be built for the playoffs. And I think the one thing is you go through what they did last year and they lost. And, yes, it's a big loss when you lose Luke Bob Mute and Trevor Ariza. But I look at it right now is you've been through adversity last year in game seven. You've been through adversity with no Capella, no Eric Gordon this year, and no Chris Paul. It comes down, J James Harden will not be scoring 60 every night in the playoffs. Now can we have somebody step up, make those plays off the basketball when they decide to double James, when they play good defense, when he's out of the lineup? Because there's going to be times. He's not going to be able to play 48 minutes. You're going to have to ask some other guys to step up, and that's where Chris Paul will come and play to make those other plays for guys. I think about – Right, I think about Russell Westbrook, think about AI during his day, and there were a lot of others, but great offensive players who at times, the comment was, 
well, they're trying to take too much upon themselves. They have to find a way to, to divvy it out more. We know what he can do with Capella, what CP3 can do last year. A lot of dribbles, but there were other guys making shots. How does this version of Harden now tone it down when these guys come back, considering the fact they're winning games the way he's playing? See, the thing that people don't appreciate about James is that he plays winning basketball and how he's willing to go out and get you 20 assists if you sag off all night long or if you throw a double team or you play a traditional coverage in the pick and roll, he's throwing that thing up to Capella time and time again. What do I mean by traditional coverage? playing a drop coverage with your big, and now James is baiting you and you got to pick your poison. He's either shooting the layup or he's throwing it up to Capella. He'll hit that corner skip time and time again. That's why they're playing winning basketball. You see guys like Gary Clark, James Ennis, Gerald Green knocking down corner threes. Now they are going to get tested even more with Chris Paul out. Obviously, Gordon is back to help. You saw it against the Lakers. The Lakers threw a junk defense out. They said, P.J. Tucker, go get 20. Okay, James Ennis, go get 20 points and see if you guys beat us. And the Lakers were up big. Philadelphia has success with it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see teams that actually have the personnel starting to wear James down. And a lot of teams with younger defenders or don't have enough, because you got Smitty, you know it, you got to have two and three, three and four defenders to actually guard them. They can't get physical with them. You got a young team like the Knicks, they don't know how to guard him without being whistled for a foul. But if you're a Philadelphia, as you brought up early, we were talking about a Corey Brewer or a yes. guy that's, that's long and rangy you can throw on him, that's going to start to wear down James. But for the regular season, I just don't see it being a problem. You know, for me, as you always had great players in my era with Michael Jordan, but the one mm. thing you look at is you see their numbers. And the first thing I did when we weren't playing against Michael is go to the other guys. And that's when you started to see the Scottie Pippen with 22 points, mm -hmm. 11 rebounds, four steals. It's yep. not to 50. It's not to 40. Didn't need it. You didn't need it. But right. that's where you start to see, wow, this team is built more than just a superstar. And like tonight, Eric Gordon having 20, that's huge. You can get 20 points on a guy who had 38 attempts from the field, 25 attempts on the free throw line, and you can still come up with 20. That's showing you where these other guys are going to be needed to win basketball games and ultimately to win a championship. That's why it's scary watching the duo of George and Westbrook right now, right? Either one could take over the game and the other one could take over the game at the same time. Nobody taking over our game like Ryan Hollins.